I'm Garan Konstantin. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. I would like to ask maybe a non-standard question. Because branding in Russia, branding of territories in Russia is something very popular. It's been actively developed right now. But I would like to ask a question in different area. Branding of territories without which it cannot go. Uh, what territories should achieve to start branding, even though you started from the city from scratch? And is it happening sometimes that you say no to work with the territory by saying that, well, this territory is not ripe to do the branding and it should make additional steps. So which are these additional steps that the territory should make in order to begin doing the branding? Most of the times, I mean, uh, when we develop city brand projects, uh, it's, it's based on the challenges that the country has. I mean, the, every destination, every city is ready for a city brand project. You don't have to be perfect to actually become uh, or to start a city brand project. You have many cities, many regions uh, that lack, uh, if you recall what I was talking about here, let me just... Like this, yeah. If you recall, I was giving this example. There are many territories that, that lack uh, this uh, infrastructure, this political stability, this everything, and they are still destinations because they have what we call the mandatory obligations of becoming a destination. To become a destination, you have to work with emotions. And you have to work and you have to see what probably you think is something that is not good and, and look it to the positive side of it. I'll give an example. We were working with a region um, on, uh, on the southwest of Portugal. And this was a region, okay? We work with many countries, but we also work with regions. And this is a region, a territory that had nothing on it. I mean, to go to the beach, you would have to take a rope to actually to go down to the beach. It was very uncomfortable. There was, there, was, it was, uh, there was no cell coverage. There was so many things that I don't even know where to start that to say that there was a need for infrastructure. And that's when we started to realize that actually that was what was special about the destination. It was great to come down on the rope and see no one. It was great to be outside of the world. It was great for me to recharge as a tourist. Imagine I would be the tourist. Uh, uh, to recharge from the, from, from, and to be with myself and so on. So what I'm trying to say is it all depends on the angle and you always have something that is interest somewhere, someone somewhere. Um, and I gave this example, I give the example of the favelas and so on. So the project is to understand what is that you have special and who's interested about it. But the most important thing is never over promise. Never try to say something you are not. Never try to uh, say something different or never try to deceive anyone. And most of the time, some cases, not most of the time, some cases, now less and less, but regions were trying to do that. And then you generate disappointment and nobody would actually would like to go and to return there. Jose, thank you very much. Before we will go to the next question, I just received an SMS message that the Tourism Committee and the Committee uh, uh, from Dagestan uh, watching this lecture uh, by the internet and they are together with us so hello from Dagestan hello hello Jose hello Jose uh, later on I will write a letter to you <laughs> my name is Evgenia Shamis and I don't believe those coincidences that happen because since 18th to 21st of March in Bellarizon, we will hold workshop on the topic uh, of innovative cluster where we are going to work with four clusters from Brazil and one of those clusters is dedicated to electronics and telecom. Uh, this will be IT and software and it's going to be biotech and bioengineering and it's going to be sports shoes so i 
will be glad to cooperate. I already wrote a letter to Brazil, to my colleagues, about such unbelievable stories. And in one hour, in a meeting with Minas State, where Belo Horizonte is located, they will tell about this topic. So I have a practical question, which is related to my future workshop out there and to what you have faced. Why Belo Horizonte? What, how they helped you as a city and how, as a state? Uh, the state Minas Gerais, uh, Belo Horizonte is a capital of a Minas Gerais state where everything is happening. So how the state helped you? Why they? Why are they so convenient? Are they convenient as a partner for this story? And what have they done? What was special in what they've done uh, to help you? Thank you very much for your meet. So un unexpectedly and unusually. Coincidence don't, don't happen for, for sure. Uh, well, we have worked uh, with uh, the project of, of Belo Horizonte was a new city next to Belo Horizonte. Uh, Belo Horizonte and the state of Belo Horizonte and the state of Minas Gerais, um, they helped us. Uh, they were very cooperative in terms of information, in terms of uh, cooperation. It's, it's really a pleasure to work um, with uh, uh, a state and with so qualified uh, professionals. Uh, the initiative we took on this city, we were directly hired by a private investor. It was not the state who, in, who, in, who hired us. So this is a new city next to, to, to Belo Horizonte, right next. It's next to the airport of, of Belo Horizonte, actually. It's what we call an aeropolis, which is right next to the, uh, to the airport. Now, what I can say about the, the state, and we have worked uh, a lot uh, with them in terms of information for this project and, and cooperation, um, Minas is a, it's, it's a great state, uh, and it's not just to say that it's a great state, but you know, it was the state in Brazil that issued more presidents of Brazil. Um, it is the state where most of the culture comes from Brazil, like music, uh, most of everything that you hear from Brazil comes from there. Uh, sports, um, culture, uh, it's, it's really the state where it's a very, I would say it's a very um, a state that is very, I would say, doesn't shout all this, uh, it's more kind of delivers uh, more than says, right? And other states probably say more than what they deliver, right? And, uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be really a good experience. And anything we can do to help you with, a, with the project in, 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 in Minas, we're more than happy to help. <laughs> thank you, and thank you, Jose. And another question for you. Uh, Hello, Jose. I have a very brief question. How can we work with negative prejudices that people might have, uh, which exist about every state, about every city? For example, Russia very often is perceived with uh, bears in the street, with vodka. So how can we break over negative? I mean, like I said, every country has, so thank you for your question, but every country, every city, you always have a negative and positive. There's not, never a single country, a single city that has only everything positive. And if it does, then it's a boring destination. Nobody really wants to, uh, to go, to invest, to live there, right? Um, and Russia, uh, and the things that I, I, I focus much is, Russia has uh, a lot of positive aspects. And I, I can start naming the following. I mean, it, it has probably associated, even though you have a lot of issues, of course, but the latest developments have really helped the brand of Russia. It's uh, happily placed under an umbrella called uh, BRICS. I mean, it's a very good place to be in. Uh, you don't want to be in the pigs. <laughs> you want to be in the BRICS. <laughs> and just by saying BRICS, um, it really helps the perception of Russia. Everybody knows that Russia has been growing uh, economically. Everybody knows that Russia has been growing positively. And that, per se, is for sure helping uh, the image of, of Russia. So Russia is growing positively in terms of a nation brand. There's still a lot of things to work upon, and we all know what they are, but I would really stress the ones that are positive and work with them. And especially the economic growth, I think, is really, really the special one. Thank you. 
Hello, Jose. Thank you very much for the briefest lecture in my life and in the life of most of our people sitting here. It tells about you as a person who is very concentrated on knowledge and greatest speaker. My name is Pyotr Kudryavtsev. I have a small agency. We also do branding of territories. We've done several brands for Moscow regional areas. We did a, a brand for Pereslav Zaleski. It's a small city. And uh, what's interesting, the biggest problem that we face is to explain our clients economical influence of why the brand is needed for the economy of the region or the city. So how? Well, we are finding this connection, but how you find this economical effect that your work gives to the regions? Uh, yes, I mean, you know, one of the, most of the times, and, and you know this from experience, um, when we develop projects and when, when projects for country branding and city branding are developed, the biggest difficulty is not finding the right idea, the strategy. It's about managing the project. Because, you know, the brand of the city, it's, it's public property. I mean, uh, it is something that belongs to everyone. So, who are we to say what needs to be done or not? Or who are we to forbid to do something that is done or not? On top of that, the brand is something that is very intangible. And when I say intangible, it's, it's very difficult to measure. And which is one of the difficulties that you highlighted very well. And I'll give an example, right? If I go, I'm in Moscow. Uh, I go to uh, the main square and I destroy a national asset, which is a statue, right? Uh, I go and I paint and I spray, I, I, I spray the, 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 the statue. I go, I go to, 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 to jail, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, if I change entirely the strategy of Moscow as a city brand, nothing happens to me because it's intangible, it's very difficult to measure. But nevertheless, that, that brand is more valuable for the city than the statue and as, as a, an historical uh, asset, right? So there's a big challenge about how to measure, how to really uh, manage the projects of country and city branding, right? So the things that need to be done really, even before you start creating any strategy, is really about the management of the brand. Who's responsible? Who are the different stakeholders? Because you don't, you're going to have the city hall, the promotion, the airline, everybody's going to deal with the brand. And it's going to be very difficult to put them and, 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 and I would say to convince them to use uh, the brand. So instead of trying to convince them and impose, the best is to involve them in the creation of that strategy. So even if they are not the client, they are the client. And we always bring them on board and try to bring all and identify who are all the stakeholders to, to work on that. Then the second thing, uh, or the third, let's put the third, is the measurement. The measurement is going to be what makes the, the strategy and the design, if you want, everything successful. And this management and the, so this, me this measurement is, needs to be quantifiable in uh, uh, financial impact. That's how you make the, 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 the brand uh, tangible and more easier to justify. I mean, imagine you are the mayor of the city and you decide to invest uh, one million dollars in the strategy of the city brand. Where are those results? Right? And then comes a journalist next year and says, oh, another million euros, a million dollars spent, uh, rubbles, whatever, uh, where's the results? I mean, there's people that are here starving. You know, there's people that need education. There's older people dying on the streets. Why are you spending money on some things that you don't know what is the return and what is giving the impact? So you need to find um, uh, variables and ways on how to measure. We measure it with the impact that the brand has on the GDP. That's how we measure the, the strategy of, that we develop. And for that, we have specific algorithms and specific formulas that allow us to, to, to quantify uh, what is the return on investment? And this needs to be on a 40-year spam, not on a 30-year spam, 